The next thing we want to do is notice that we now have a canvases folder in our browser. We can expand that and notice that we have this image, the canvas image. Now what we want to do is scale it. Now we're going to scale it by using the scale of the ball and socket. Now in this case, the radius of the ball is 19 millimeters. So we're going to right click on the canvas. We're going to say calibrate. Now this allows us to select two points. And again, this is going to be very subjective because we're dealing with an image. It doesn't have any coordinate point or reference point at the center of it that we can snap to. So it's a very visual thing. You just need to make sure that it's close and stick to the numbers. You need to stick with your dimensions because those are going to be the end all of your file. So roughly the center and roughly over here on the edge of the ball portion of it. And I'm going to say that this is supposed to be 19 millimeters. You see currently it's about 0.5. I'm going to say 19 and OK. And again, fit to screen. It's rescaled the entire canvas. So now this is roughly a 19 millimeter radius. It's perfectly sized for what we want to do. At this point, let's go ahead and save it. And in this user description, user saved, which you can see when you're on A360, we're going to go ahead and say canvas image inserted. So it's a good reference as what to what has been done in version one. The next thing we want to do is insert a second canvas image. We're going to do attached canvas. Again, we're going to select that front plane. And this time we want to select this image. Again, this is going to be roughly the shape that we're dealing with and say, OK. Now you'll notice that this is quite a bit smaller. Now I'm going to use the widget on the screen, which is to scale this planer. I'm going to pull it out. And I don't need to get it perfect. Remember, we can calibrate it. But what I want to do is I want to scale it out so it's roughly the right size and pull it close to being in place. We're going to have to rotate this one just a little bit. But really what we're concerned with is the shape. We want to make sure that the shape of what we're creating is approximately correct. So you notice that the angle is actually not, not too bad for what we have underneath. We might need to make the canvas opacity a little bit less so we can see through. And you can see that we need to rotate it just slightly. So we have a Z angle. If we say five degrees, you notice that it rotates at five degrees and it gets it pretty close to what we want. If you need to modify it, we can edit the canvas and again, use our widgets to move it around and get it close to where we need. Now it's very important as we look at this, um, when we rotate it to five degrees to match the angle of that taper, this is obviously outside of the bone. We're going to assume that this x-ray is of our patient and this is the angle of the hip and the alignment of the hip that we want to, to maintain. So we're going to have to modify this. We'll go back negative five degrees, take a look at that and uh, it looks a little bit better, but again, we need to move it just one more time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the shape and the angle that we need here. And I'm going to go another minus five degrees. And I think that looks pretty good. It gets us pretty close and we can say, okay. Now we can also rename these if we choose. Uh, so we're going to call this one implant profile. And we're going to call the first one implant reference. So we can hide or show either one, and that way we have a great reference for what we're doing. Again, we can fit to screen, go ahead and save the file one more time, and we're going to say implant profile. So now we have a version two of our file, and again, we don't have any solid geometry. There's no CAD that has gone on here yet. We simply created the basis of our file, the two components, as well as the two attached canvases, the reference images that we wanted to pull in. At this point, the next thing that we want to do is start to create some of the basic mechanical geometry that we need. In this case, the revolve for the ball and then the, the actual shaft that goes into that. It's going to be a very mechanical shape, not something that really needs that nice blended organic feel. And that's going to give us the basis that we can build on in the next module.